I'm here and on time, which only proves that women are sometimes and men are not always. And finish the sentence, please. On time. Thank you. Don't you know you can drive a writer crazy by not finishing sentences? I'm sorry. How can you shave like that without a mirror? I remember my face. <laughs> Ow. Not very well. You missed a spot. Put your finger on it. There. You must have been working very late. Six hours on one interview, but it was fascinating. Hmm. Six hours interviewing just one woman. How'd you know it was a woman? Can't think of anything else that would fascinate you that long. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> Who is she? Margaret Weatherby. Who? Margaret Weatherby. She's a lady. <laughs> How'd you find out? <laughs> I saw a picture of her late husband, Lord Weatherby. Oh, that kind of a lady. What are you doing? I'm gonna tie your tie. Have you ever tied a tie? No, but I've watched my father do it millions of times. It can't be that complicated. What do you mean, that kind of a lady? I mean, it's a title, not a testimonial. <laughs> do you know how old Trixie Weatherby is? Oh, Trixie Weatherby. She's very rich. That's the one. Do you know how old she is? What's so fascinating about her? For openers, try $53 million. That's pretty fascinating. <laughs> you know, there are two things that women should never do. Get mixed up in politics and tie ties. Lots of women are mixed up in politics. And very successfully. Okay, make that one thing women should never do. So you met the fascinating, rich, and gorgeous Trixie Weatherby. <laughs> Honey, do you know how old she is? What difference does it make when you're fascinating, rich, and gorgeous? She must be 70 years old. You're not serious. I am. I read somewhere that she was married four times. Six. Are you sure she's 70, or does she just look 70? I've never met anyone like her. She's been everywhere, done everything. I'll bet. First, I'm a lousy shaver. Now I can't even tie a tie. I wonder if I should start questioning my masculinity. I'd suggest further tests. Would you mind getting that? You just failed the old doorbell test. <laughs> Mr. Hollinger? Maybe we should discuss my femininity. Oh, I'm sorry, lady. Oh, that's okay. This is Mr. Hollinger's apartment. Uh, well, this package is for him. Would you sign for it? Oh, sure. Oh, my gosh. Here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Donald! What's this? According to reliable sources, it's a package. For me? Well, we've already established that I'm not Mr. Holland. Who's it from? Trixie Weatherby. Oh, now why did that sweet old lady send me a package? Listen to this. Thanks for everything, love, and it's signed, That Girl. <laughs> send you a set of golf clubs. Aluminum shafts. Is that good? The best made. Donald, why would that girl send you the best set of golf clubs made? Honey, I told you, she's a nice, sweet old lady. Well, nice, sweet old ladies don't send golf clubs to nice young men they just met. Why not? 
Well, it just doesn't seem nice. And besides, what's this that girl business? I thought you said she was in her 70s. She is. Well, then she hasn't been a girl for a couple of months now. <laughs> Honey, that's just her way of referring to herself. Oh, yeah? Well, it still doesn't explain why she sends you an expensive set of golf clubs. But look, honey, during the interview, she mentioned that she was a golf buff. And I said I liked to play, but that my game wasn't very good and that my clubs were very old. Oh, Donald, you've said that to me a hundred times, and I never felt the urge to buy you a set of golf clubs. I've been aware of that. <laughs> but I never could really afford it. Honey. Look, Trixie made a big deal about the fact that she'd been married six times but didn't have any children. So, you know, she probably thinks of me as the son she never had. Son? Of course. You really think so? Honey, what else could it be? Look, she's just a sweet old lady with a little too much money and not enough people to spend it on. Yeah, maybe you're right. And you know if I could, I would. Finish. Buy you golf clubs. <laughs> that means more to me than anything else. Sometimes I wish Alexander Graham Bell had gone into another line of work. Hello? Uh, oh, hello, Lady Weatherby. Uh, of course. Trixie. <laughs> yeah, they just arrived, and, and listen, I can't thank you enough, but, but you really shouldn't have. Uh, tonight? Uh, well, I, uh, I, I have a date. Uh, well, uh, just a minute. She wants us to have dinner with her. She's got some kind of project she wants to discuss with me. I'll bet. Uh, uh, thanks. We'll be right there. Madam Cole? You can get rid of the plates, Earl. Certainly, madam. <laughs> Is there anything more Madam wishes? Madam wishes some more coffee when you get around to it, and you can check on what anybody else wishes. Very well. <laughs> He certainly is British. Oh, well, they make the best butlers. I used an ex-fighter once, but every time I rang the bell, he threw a punch at the cook. <laughs> Isn't that funny, honey? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Trixie's led a very interesting life. Interesting? Some of it's been downright unmentionable. <laughs> You know, I've been married six times. Up until now. Up until now? Oh, I can't stand being single. Going out one night with one guy, the next night another one. I believe in marriage. I don't care what it costs, it's worth it. I've had the greatest togetherness any woman's ever had. Six different kinds. <laughs> six different times, naturally. <laughs> <coughs> Slap her on the back. Six dandy husbands. Every single one of them a beauty. A senator, a judge, a short order cook. Francois, the chicken king. You heard of him. Oh, yes. I read a, a story about him in a magazine one time. I saw a picture of him. He looked kind of uh, young. Well, they're the best kind. When they're pushing 40... They're set in their ways, stomach trouble. After my first husband, Lord Weatherby, who was very old and uh, very rich, I learned to concentrate on the young one. Oh. <coughs> You're excused. Anyway, my fourth husband was a nice young baseball player. I bought him from the Yankees. You bought him? I made him a better offer than the Giants. Does that shock you? Oh, well, a little, little. Okay, we better change the subject. I'll tell you about all the rest of my husbands another time. Don, I want to talk business with you. Okay, if I borrow him for a few minutes? Oh, sure. <laughs> 
I beg your pardon, miss. Would you care for anything more? Oh, oh no, thank you. I, I was just looking at the paintings. Ah, oh, yes, miss. They're very beautiful. What, what are they? Several of Lady Weatherby's estates. This one is in Spain. This, England. Switzerland. And Magamba. Magamba? An island in the South Pacific. Oh. Uh, Lady Weatherby owns it. Oh, my. I like this one the best. Ah, yes. That is Wickshire Castle. It holds many happy memories for me. Oh, really? Did you used to work there? Uh, no, miss. It was mine. <laughs> I am the Earl of Wickshire. Oh. N nice to meet you. It's my pleasure, I assure you. Excuse me. I guess he didn't get a very good price for it. Well, what would you think of Trixie? Very interesting. Did you know one of her husbands climbed Mount Everest? Mm, why didn't she buy him an elevator? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Honey, Trixie wants a book written about her life. She thinks I may be the writer to do it. That's what she wanted to talk to me about. Oh. You don't sound too enthused. That project could mean great things to me. I'll bet. <laughs> It's almost midnight. Dust can't tell time. <laughs> Anne, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I'll tell you what's wrong with me. That woman's wrong with me. She's the most corrupt person I've ever met in my life. She's also completely honest about it, so I can't really dislike her for it. Now, I know she's supposed to think of you as a son, Donald, but frankly, she's the most unmaternal woman I can imagine. I, I don't think there's such a word as unmaternal. Don't you flaunt your dictionary at me, Don. I'm trying to tell you how I feel. Well, what does that have to do with pushing a carpet sweeper around at midnight? I'm upset, and when I'm upset, I've got to do something physical. All right, honey, maybe Trixie doesn't fit your idea of motherhood, but I'll tell you something. She reminds me very much of my grandmother. Well, that should come as shocking news to your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> You're jealous. You're jealous of that sweet old lady. Well, you're yeah, not jealous. And that sweet old lady is not so sweet. You know, you're acting very silly. Am I? Am I? Very. Trixie Weatherby is an interesting character. As a writer, I am interested in interesting characters. As a man, I am interested in you. Now what is it? I have an urge to do something very physical. And at this hour of night, I think I'd better stick to the sweep. <laughs> Okay, Don, start explaining. I am ready for an explanation, and I want it explained to my satisfaction, so go ahead, explain yourself. Well, if you're talking about the promotion I got and you didn't, it's probably because you're redundant. Why you? Why not me? Even us? News views, foreign correspondent. How does it feel? Well, Jerry, it's it's still a little hard to believe. Oh, if I'd gotten a job, I'd believe it in a minute. I just, I suppose you got a raise, too. Double my old salary. Disgusting. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks a lot. You don't seem too uh, choked up about it. Well, I'll be gone a lot, Jerry, and I'm not sure about being away from Anne for months at a time. Yeah, I know that bothered me. Ruthie, I could stay away from for years, but I'd miss Anne. <laughs> I don't know, Jerry. I'm very leery about telling her. I don't know how she's going to take it. Forget Anne. Worry about how I'm going to take it. In fact, I'm on my way right now to throw myself down the escalator. Jerry. What? Uh, this building doesn't have an escalator. Oh. You know, you may have just put your finger on why you got the job and I didn't. <laughs> Hold it, hold it. It's my turn. I know it's your turn. I feel like making a deal. No more deals. You already conned me out of Rockefeller Center for that worthless desert property. That worthless desert property happens to be Palm Springs. Who needs it? No more deals. Five. Two, three, four, five. Try your one. 
sell all your possessions, say goodbye to your friends, and take a boat to Europe. You've just been made a foreign correspondent. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to play this stupid game anymore. Oh, come on, honey. We decided not to talk about it. Well, how can we not talk about it when even that stupid game talks about it? Okay. You want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. Well, I guess there's really nothing to talk about. I mean, you got a big raise and a big promotion. We should be happy. That's it. Happy. Well, I'm unhappy. <laughs> it's not as if I'm going to be gone forever. Well, it's almost better if you were. At least that I could get used to. Man. Well, you know what I mean. No, I'm not sure I do. Well, this way, you go away, and just as I'm getting used to your being away, you come home. And just as I get really used to having you home again, you go away. Well, I guess that's the price you pay for being in love with a foreign correspondent. <laughs> Donald, just promise me one thing. Now, look, don't give that another thought. Don't give what another thought? The European girls. I wasn't thinking about European girls. Why would you be thinking about European girls unless you were thinking about European girls? <laughs> I'm sorry, Donald. I'm acting like a child. I love you. And you really won't be away, I mean, that much. For as little as possible. And when you're home, we'll spend all of our time together. Starting right now. Why don't you have lunch with me tomorrow? Okay. Providing you have dinner with me tomorrow night. It's a deal. I feel a lot better now. Wanna play that stupid game again? Why not? Come on. It's my turn. Okay, roll. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Potluck. Advance token to nearest steamship line. You are going on a long voyage. <laughs> Hi. 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 You ready for lunch? Yeah, just as soon as I drop this off at the editors. You make yourself comfortable, I'll be right back. Well, hurry, I'm starved. Okay. Well, what do you think of our new foreign correspondent? I'm crazy about him. I gathered that. I was wondering what you thought about his new job. Oh. Oh, I think it's a marvelous break for Donald. I wish he'd never gotten it. It's funny, I have exactly the same feelings, but for very different reasons. <laughs> the American in Switzerland? Yeah, Don's boning up on the places he'll be corresponding from. Mm. England, land of kings. A visitor's guide to Spain. Are those the countries Donald's going to? Yeah, on his first trip. Mm. Switzerland, England, Spain. That's not right. Spain, England, Switzerland. That's right. There's something missing. Spain, England, Switzerland. Magumba. Spain, England, Switzerland, and Magumba. Ann, hey, what are you talking about? Jerry, did you tell me something? Would it be possible for a very rich person, say a very rich person like a Trixie Weatherby, to bribe the publishers of Newsroom Magazine into giving somebody a new assignment? Impossible. Trixie Weatherby couldn't bribe the publisher. Trixie Weatherby is the publisher. <laughs> what? Trixie Weatherby owns and publishes Newsview Magazine. <laughs> Come on, starving lady, I'll buy you lunch. Donald Hollinger! You never said a word and you knew! Finish. That Trixie Weatherby is the publisher of this magazine that just happened to give you a new assignment that just happens to take you to all the places she owns. You know Trixie Weatherby. Well, I was going to tell you about that. How? By writing me a letter in Magumbian? I know what you're thinking. I don't. And what are you thinking? She gave you this job so that she could have you around. That's not true. Of course, I see it all now. I got this job because I was the best qualified for it. My friendship with Trixie has nothing to do with it. Your friendship with Trixie? Someday you may have gotten this job on your own, Donald. But not this time. This time, this is not your job, Donald. This time, it's Trixie's. Politics? I knew I could have gotten a job if it weren't for politics. <laughs> Honey, I think it's time you and Trixie have a little girl talk. Oh. I'll come right to the point. 
Yeah, I kind of thought you would. I've been married six times. Five of my ex-husbands have done pretty good for themselves. Yeah, I guess so. Why not Don? Why not Don what? What? Why not Don? Yeah, yeah, I know. Older lady with a young guy, so? You want Donald to marry you? I can give him anything he wants. Why interfere? I love him. What's that got to do with it? What can you give him? Well, children. What about him? Well, Donald's very fond of children, you know. And, and besides, c could you give him children? Are you kidding? I support three orphanages. <laughs> oh, look, why are we even talking about this? You already won. You got on this job that, that takes them away from me and keeps them close to you. That's just the thing. He didn't take the job. He turned it down. He did? That's why I thought we ought to make a deal. You're an actress. You want to be a star, right? I'll buy it for you. Are you asking me to sell Donald? <laughs> I'm too romantic to think about it that way. But if it's the only way to get him... No deal. Stop thinking about yourself. Think about him. He's given up a great opportunity for you. Look, that's very flattering, Trixie. But Donald does what he thinks is right. But what's right and what's good for Donald are two different things. Look, I don't even want to discuss this anymore. You sure we can't do business? Positive. <laughs> okay, okay. At my age, I can't afford to waste time arguing with kids. There are other fish in the sea. I'll be running along while I still have bait on my hook. <laughs> Bye, Trixie. This will be an experience I won't forget. That's one of the good things about getting older. By tomorrow, I'll forget everything. <laughs> so long, honey. Donald! Donald! Oh, Donald! Oh! <laughs> oh, Donald, you make me feel so happy and so proud. I feel just like the Duchess of Windsor. I'm not sure that's a good thing. You know what I mean. The Duke gave up a whole kingdom for the woman he loved, and you gave up a big promotion and a raise and... Oh, honey, Anne. What? Look, I want to be honest with you. <laughs> you don't get to play the Duchess of Windsor in this one. I don't? Oh, look, honey, I, I turned down Trixie and her job for one reason. Professional pride. You were right. I couldn't have been happy in that job unless I was absolutely certain I had made it on my own ability. I don't get to be your Duchess of Windsor? <laughs> Maybe next time. But you can be my Betty Sue Selinsky. Who's Betty Sue Selinsky? A girl I used to love. In fact, I loved her so much, I gave up something very important. Oh, yeah? What'd you give up for Betty Sue Selinsky? The dead frog I used to carry in my lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> change my shirt and we'll go to dinner. Okay. Here, honey, why don't you sort the mayo while I change? We're not even engaged and already I'm doing the crummy little jobs. Let's sort the mail. You may find a love note from an old flame. There's something from Trixie Weatherby. Oh, yeah? Open it. Oh, no, I think you ought to be the one to open it. <laughs> open it. Lady Margaret Weatherby proudly announces her recent marriage to Wendell Holmesby Smythe, the Earl of Wickersham. Well, what do you know? She finally found herself another young fella, and with a title yet. Wendell Holmesby Smythe is no boy. How do you know? Well, look at him. Where is he? In the kitchen, probably. Oh, but I'm happy for him. He's going to get the old house back. Come on, Donald, let's go. What kitchen? What house? What are you talking about? Trixie's butler, the Earl of Wickershire. Honestly, Donald, don't you listen? No. Oh, that's my trouble. I don't listen. <laughs>